Okay, hello, 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 everyone. My name is Diamond Rivera of Diamond Rivera Films, and you tuned into a special episode of Live Discussions with Diamond, uh, featuring here the one and only all the way from Spain. Man, this, before I even say your name, honestly, this here is truly a celebration of all your success. I'm thankful to have this man here. Uh, he's been all over the world traveling. Uh, doing demos and workshops, being a part of and helping create some of the world's largest Bakshata festivals to date. Uh, the man himself, Mr. Pablo Vigches. Thank you very much for this invitation. I'm super happy to be connected with you and with all this audience. And uh, and let you know, because you was uh, enjoying with me in New Jersey Festival, one of uh, my uh, historical great test parties of the union in bachata yeah. and Kisomba together and uh, mixing everything parties in the day in the night medium day but especially high quality parties and everything and um, we was together in that moment a beautiful moment of my life and uh, i'm super happy to reconnect with usa again especially in this strange yeah. moment in the life yeah time of the dancing scene, but uh, I'm super happy to use this point like a restart mm -hmm. dancing in the future, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And and like you said, myself, we came into contact at the 2016 New Jersey Bachata Kizomba Salsa Festival, which it was called at one point. Um, but I definitely remember yourself and George Elizondo um, from Texas. And you guys, honestly, as alongside Mikey G um, of Pura Vida, were able to put on an event. Truly, that was not just in terms of the capacity and attendance that was large, but the ambiance, the atmosphere was infectious. And a lot of people, that event specifically for me and that time period was amazing just to see people like Ataka La Mana and some of Europe's amazing performers coming to New Jersey and all being under one roof and being able to dance. And we'll definitely get more into that. But I mean, for me, I love um, me as well, understanding your journey, because many people throughout the world know you as a promoter, as a festival organizer, as an influencer in our dance community. But, you know, and you've had many experiences with different artists. But myself, I'm really more in tune to understand who Pablo is as a person. And for me, I kind of want to get an understanding of how did Bakshata really come into your life and the start of you being in this dance community? Well, that's come from a long, long time ago. <laughs> because uh, I was born in Chile. I live in Spain. Uh, dad from Spain, mom from Chile. So the first part of my life, I live in, 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 in Chile. And my education from, was from Latin America. I'm super happy of that. Uh, and always I have two, two parts of my, my same life. For one side, studies. I study economics in the university and I finished my studies. So I start to study and work at the same time, very, very early in my childhood, because I started my university period at 14 years old, and I finished my career of economics at 19 years old. Mm. But at the same time, at the 14, 15, I started to learn tango, Argentine tango. So I remember always because with my normal friends of the university, we was, you know, partying, drinking, <laughs> normal music, blah, blah, blah. But with my dance uh, friends, I was very old because I love tango and I was 14, 15 years old. But the tango community normally is people with more age, right? So I start with Argentine tango, and a little later, like with 15, 16, I start with salsa cubana mm. with Cuban friends. And in the same moment, when you learn Cuban salsa, you learn Cuban salsa, merengue, bachata, cha cha cha, mm -hmm. all the package, you know, it's Latin music. But my, my family uh, was uh, dancing 
there, there was instructor of Argentine tango mm -hmm. and uh, Spanish music like Sevillanas, flamenco. There was some musicians in my life also. My father was a guitar musician. And I play violin since I have three years old. So the, the music is in my life since yeah. always. So for one side, that was my normal life, studying and working. But what I use for this connect of my normal uh, behavior and responsibilities and enjoy was the dance and the music. And from this point, in, uh, I traveled to Spain for continuing my studies, a master's degree in marketing, in economics, blah, blah, blah. And in the same moment, I started with the uh, Argentine tango um, night parties. That is named um, milongas. Mm -hmm. And I have 19 years old. So always I maintain these two lives, parallel lives. Yeah. The day life and the night life, you know? And that was my starting point. And when I was in the tango community, uh, I created a company named tangoventos.com. That was mm -hmm. in 1999, long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> 22 years ago. How old are you now? I mean, right, me, I'm actually turning 30 this, 30 in about two months. So, I mean, oh, I definitely good. remember the dance scene, especially in the U.S. side from like 99 and up. Yeah. So you was eight years old. Yes. When I, when I <laughs> so uh, what I did in, in Madrid, Spain was um, creating this uh, tango days and teaching at the same time tango. Uh, five days per week. Mm. And one day I teach other Latin dances like salsa yeah. and merengue and bachata all together. That was Latin night. Yes. For them. And in the day working like economist and studying at the same time. Wow. That was I mean, the yeah, and, and understanding that journey of how it started, because you said you being so musically inclined of learning violin since three, your, your, your family being just enthralled with music, so it's kind of followed you throughout your life. Yeah, that made me very natural. Mm -hmm. For me, it was always very organic. Listen music, play music, and dance with music. Yes. That, that was a natural thing because I remember every weekend in home, we have a big family and some one of my family was performing and the other was playing guitar, other piano, other singing, other, uh, you know, I was playing violin since I have very child and all the family was looking and enjoying together. No? Mm -hmm. So something natural and, and normally we invite people to our home and the people enjoy that you know friends other family so i remember my first uh party and my was the day of my first performance mm. with 15 years old i make a performance of uh, tango mm -hmm. with other students and we make a um, uh, like a small festival student festival in a discotheque in chile that was like 400 people and since that moment always i was organizing parties discotheques and dancing at the same time and you know yeah no definitely and now understanding realizing that dance has really been there from as you were a youth and now getting older um, really understanding now how you got into the bachata community, but also started becoming the festival organizer, because I believe there was an event in, I believe, 2010 called Todo Bachata. Um, and I was told possibly this was the first festival in Spain. Um, and this is also where you met George Elizondo. So this is something yeah, I definitely cool. would love to know a little bit more information about. If that is true, the, oh. that was the first event. 
So in 1999, I started with a discotheque, very old discotheque, uh, with tango. But in 2001, mm -hmm. this is because it is named Cats, Club Cats. So it's for 1,000 people. So in 2001, uh, I, I organized and teach in, in, the, in the Sundays in this disco, salsa. And Latin dances, salsa and bachata and cha cha cha, all together. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday since 2001. Actually, this year we we have 19 years all of these Sundays because continue working. You know, yeah. and since 2000 until one until 2007, I was in the clubs in my class. What that was cats. And others named La Siesta, Shabai, Orange Cafe, many different clubs in, in Madrid. But in 2007, uh, there was one festival named uh, Burgos, Salzón. They hired me for teach. Mm -hmm. South Cubana and Bachatango. Because in 1999, one day, I was dancing in, a, in one club and because I love tango and I love bachata, I was dancing bachata with one friend mm -hmm. and I tried to put some tango boleas, ganchos inside of bachata. So, so this is I really the, the, the birth of bachatango then? Yeah. Mm. So this fusion was created one crazy night of dance. <laughs> really? And this lady danced tango also. Mm. So we was fusioning tango and bachata and we started in that point. And in, after six or seven years, because I was teaching bachata, there was no music of bachata at that time. Mm -hmm. But in 2004, there was an Italian producer named Graziano Bogliani with the benchmark D and G and got a um, mojito project, Hispanico Latino, and they create the fusion, musical fusion of bachatas with a bandoneon. Mm. You know, the small instrument. Yes. And bandoneon is the main instrument of the tango. If you need to feel the soul of the tango, when you feel a bandoneon playing, is tango. So what mm. this guy created was the music, but I was dancing before the music exists. Mm. You know? So yeah. when I see the music, that was amazing because I said, okay, finally, I have the music for what I was dancing. Mm -hmm. And in 2007, uh, I started to teach bachatango in a lot of festivals and Salsa Cubana at the same time. Okay. In 2009, I created the festival named Convención Salsea. And from this festival, I traveled to Todo Bachata. Mm. And they bring me like instructor of Bachatango. God, okay. And, and in that festival, there was like the first festival of Bachata. So the, in that festival came Liel Gringuito from mm. the Jorge Elizondo, Troy and Jet, Ataca la Alemana, uh, Gabriel in Leti, Gabriel uh, from Spain. Mm -hmm. Gabriel is the cousin of Daniel y Desire, from Daniel. Mm, okay, okay. Gotcha, and gotcha. I was there like a student of the school of Gabriel. Wow. I festival. definitely did not know that. And that was, in that festival, was Corky also. Corky and Judith. No, but that was Corky only. Oh, but okay, Corky. okay. Judith started to exist uh, in the life of Corky later. Gotcha. And uh, that's all. I mean, and Carlos Espinosa with Bachata Soup. That was, I think, the... Ah, and Tony Lara. Also, yes, Tony Lara. Yes, I've definitely heard of him for sure. All we together was the first, uh, and Frank Santos. Okay, yes, yes, definitely. He was the first instructor of different fusion of bachata, you know, mm -hmm. together for the first time. And I couldn't speak with the 
with Jorge Lizondo during the weekend. But when we go back to Madrid, we go back in the same train. Mm. In, a, in a train is named Ave because it's fast train in between Sevilla and Madrid. Mm -hmm. And in, we go to the cafeteria and I see him, he saw me, and I said, you were there, no? And we start to talk. And Jorge, like you know, is a brilliant guy, incredible good person, and he's super altruist. So we start to create and speak and, and talk about what can we do for help the bachata grow using our all our experience in salsa, because I was mm -hmm. doing a lot of things in salsa before. Gotcha. So what we created in that moment was, okay, first of all, we need the stars. Let's support the competitions, because from the competitions will come new artists. Mm -hmm. And in every salsa festival, we need to try to put one bachata room. Mm. And also, we need to support and ask for have bachata days in the clubs. So Jorge and I decided to join and work together. And he was in USA, I was in Europe. And I started to talk with all my friends, organizers here in Europe. He started to talk with all the organizers in USA. And we start to run the same plan. You know? So in World Latin Cups, World Salsa Summit, they create a special category for bachata. Here in Europe, we create bachata open competition, bachata start competition. So in the next year, 2010, I start these other competitions. And the first bachata open uh, that was won by Juan Carlos y Ana. And the second place was Chavez and Silvia. And mm. bachata start was, the winner was Daniel and Desire, and the second place, Chavez and Silvia. And I was the judge in that competition. Also George, another mm -hmm. And in USA, it happened the same. So after two years, in 2011, we have winners of competitions. So we start to hire them coming inside of the bachata rooms in the normal salsa festival. Mm -hmm. You know? And we start to help these dancers to create a name and increase their quality of shows. Because I remember in the past, you know, uh, when you was in a salsa festival, the quality of the show was really high. Yeah. And the first bachata shows was very slow. But step by step, it started to grow because of the competitions. Hmm. And, uh, and I always continue teaching bachata tango and later bachata fusion, fusion and all the styles of bachata, Dominican bachata, and inside of fusion, different styles like inside yeah. fusion, you know, tango, sensual, urban, etc. But the, the, the beautiful point was George and I and other uh, organizers decide to jump from Europe to USA yeah. and from USA to Europe. So I bring Daniel and Desire for first time to USA and George helped to bring Atacala Alemana to Europe and other dancers, you know, like Alex and Desire, yeah. like Chavez and Silvia, and all the time. And we create this international community. And now, for example, George continues developing bachata in Asia, and I develop bachata in Russia. Wow. <laughs> it just it just keeps going. And I think too, like it speaks to a lot because in reality, we understand in our community when you have the festival organizers, the people with money, you understand that it's hard for people to want to work together. But especially now having two entities, one from Europe and one from the U.S. working on the same common goal. But you're saying, I'm bringing Chavez and Silvia. You're bringing Alex and Desiree. You're bringing Daniel and Desiree. He's bringing Ataka Alemana. And that right there is, it's actually a win-win for everyone. Because realize, it's, <laughs> because it's giving the artist exposure. But it's also saying, who are the 
key people that are bringing these people or helping to promote. And you see it here, Pablo yourself. And, and, and it means a lot because a lot of people don't understand, especially nowadays when we had competitions pre-COVID of having categories of bachata, having categories of bachatango, cabaret, what might have you, realizing that if it wasn't, in my opinion, for people like yourself and George and Rachata and many other people many, that many. honest yeah, it's like it's people have to understand is that without the events, there's no exposure. When people don't notice that there's events or congresses or festivals happening, there's no promotion. So realizing that since twenty ten or two thousand nine, but twenty ten, you and George and many other promoters have been focused on expanding the um the outlook of what bachata is and like you said it's not just traditional modern it's a fusion it it goes it can go in many different ways but in my opinion i think bachata has really just catapulted and ran through like a freight train through this dance scene it's run ramp rampant i mean now you have bachata congresses yeah i mean step by step all the community working together um, help to 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 enjoy together about this beautiful community mm -hmm. because in bachata for me we always work like a community not like a company that was a real community because when uh, in new jersey for example when uh, when i bring a new artist from europe doesn't matter which one Normally, the the people, the customers, for me, it's not customers. For me, it's the people, my people. Yeah. Trust in my election of high quality of instructors. So, so maybe they don't know the artist, but they know that will be a great instructor, great social dancer, good performer. So because they bring, first of all, Daniel Andesire, later Simona Serena, later Ronald Alba, later... so. Always was someone good. And the same mm -hmm. to George from the beginning, because George told me, hey, Pablo, now there is a very high quality, talented couple, but nobody knows them in Europe. So I start to talk with the European organizer and let's bring them to Europe, make exposure for them. Let's help them because they are good people also. So let's mm -hmm. support each other to make the community grow. It's a yes. work all together, instructors, uh, competitions, uh, teachers, uh, uh, DJs, musicians, because now, for example, you can see how I, yesterday I was talking with Fidel from Grupo Extra, and two days mm. ago I was talking with uh, Johnny, uh, the manager of uh, Daniel Santa Cruz, and uh, the week before we was talking with um, Johnny Evidence, a new great singer, but uh, by other hand, we work a lot with Danny J. And I knew Danny J, for example, when he was a student of the Congress of Daniel and Desire in Sevilla, and Daniel and Desire told me, look, Paulo, this guy is super talented guy, but nobody know it. Why we don't bring him to be a singer of bachata? Mm. And I said, yes, why not? Let's do, let's help Bachata to grow because we have no singer of Bachata in Europe. And I bring him to my club in, in Madrid and Daniel and, and Desire help them dancing a lot of these, his songs and make it mm. viral. And in my website, bachatea.net, with a lot of viewers, we support them. So all together work, dancers, musicians, DJs, organizers. So when the yeah. community work together, beautiful things happen. When the community start to work like a business companies, it's difficult that beautiful things happen. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I definitely understand because it's hard to mix business and pleasure because you love the art of dance and you love bachata, salsa, but dance in general, but then you're mixing it with building a business behind it. So there's always some obstacles that come, but I say, I, I, you said something very intriguing and was that Daniel and Desiree was 
were helping promote Danny J, who is from Spain, I believe. He's from that area, and I believe in Madrid. No, Daniel Andresira lives in Sevilla, and Danny J lives in Sevilla also. And gotcha. I create a festival for Daniel Andresira in Sevilla, named it first D and D Bachatea. Yes, That's I remember that. <laughs> 2014. But later I start I stopped to do this festival and they name it D and D Unlike. Mm. But what my my objective was, okay, this is a leader, so I will help them to be first of all good dancer, them a star. Then if you are a leader of a lot of people, you can be an uh, engine in your own city to make the community of Bachata grow. So let's make a festival there. Absolutely. And, and like what you, you were know? saying too was that with Daniel and Desiree actually having Danny J and pushing him forward and working together, building the artist who has the song, but then using their song, his song, to also promote them. And by other side, I, I do the same with uh, Simona Serena in Turin, Italy. Mm -hmm. so first of all, we try to help them to grow in the competition when they won. They may they be my business partners, and I create a festival, a two dance festival in Turin with them. Mm -hmm. With a great festival with two thousand people right now. Wow. So after two or three years, I stop to be business partner. I continue my way, but this festival continue. So the community in Turin have a great festival in this place, and grow and grow and grow. Yeah. The same do with Jose Ferrante in Milano, Italy with a festival named Euro Bachata Festival, you know? And the same happened in Miami when I create Miami Bachata Festival and in New Jersey with the New Jersey, first of all, Kisoma Bachata and now only Bachata Festival. So my intention always was, okay, there is a city. Let's push the local community to grow mm -hmm. and let's help to a local uh, dancer or instructor to grow and create a festival. And at the same time, I can support them with international connections and dancers and singers. And that is the way, I mean, all together. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and realizing too, since 2010, uh, realizing here that you've been a part of events in Europe and in the US, uh, there's the Summer Bachata and Kizomba festivals in Houston, which was the first ever Kizomba Festival in the USA. I think that was in 2012. Beautiful. As well as, yeah, as well as uh, helping create the first Miami Bachata Festival and also being a part and working with um, Mikey G to do and George to help and work with the New Jersey Bachata Festival. For example, George bring me like artist in 2012 to Dallas Bachata Festival. Mm -hmm. But, but what George do with many artists in the in the USA dance scenes, I think nobody know it. Because, for example, he bring me for first time, and I start to knew the community because of him. If yeah. he don't bring me, that was impossible. And because I was there, I could understand better the way of work in USA. And I can bring a lot of artists and talent from Europe to USA and from USA to Europe. Mm -hmm. So because his incredible and altruist work, I could support again uh, the community. So it's like a, a stir, no? Mm -hmm. One step and the other and the other. And the... George support me. I support other to come here. Yes. And from here, go there. Beautiful. Absolutely. It's like, it, it's it's one hand feeds the other, but again, it's really too, it helps the artist because like you said, even in Europe, many people in the US, when we think of Europe and Bachata, the Daniel and Desiree's, the Corky and Judas, the Ronald Albas, the Chavez y Silvias, the list goes on. So it's really like, we can only see through YouTube or visuals or demos that we see but then realizing that people from Europe can then get to know people from the U.S. and some of the great dancers we have of being able to bring them. For example, when I bring Yura Lambera, mm -hmm. Alexander Cire, Mike G, uh, singers 
like Daniel Santa Cruz, like Kevin Cosmo, uh, from Curacao, um, Efram J. Um, I don't know, many, 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 many dancers coming to Europe and we support them because it's a great level. I think now the level of the quality of the dancers in US and in Europe is very similar. Mm -hmm. Only is different in the color. It's like the flavor, the maybe in USA is more Dominican mm -hmm. style, a little a little more. And in, in Europe is more fusion. But now I think everything is similar. Yeah, I know what you mean, because there comes a point when like bachata dancing and we started to have these events and socials and festivals. And sometimes it kind of looked the same, but then over the years it evolved. You had the fusions, you had different styles, you had bachatango that now was producing because I started seeing it, to be honest with you, just to know that you are honestly the person who originated this so many years prior and realizing, because for me, I, yeah, I, I love bachatango and honestly, one of my favorite, yes, I actually do. Create the, um, uh, uh, the, the first DVD Mm -hmm. uh, recording me, and in that time I was dancing with Sara Lopez. Oh, wow. Yeah. She was my partner, first of all. Actually, I discovered her. She was coming to my club in Cats mm -hmm. when she was 18 years old. She was dancing hip hop in the night. So I saw her and I said, oh, why, why you don't come to my lesson of bachata in the Sundays? And she came, beautiful person. Mm -hmm. After six months, she was teaching with me. Like my, my, like my assistant. And after that, in 2007, we started to go all around teaching bachatango and salsa. Mm. Uh, and after that, I, I introduced her with Alvir for a contest of bachata in my club. So I joined them in that moment. Wow. So after she stopped to work with me, they continued dancing kizomba. But in that video of 2010, I was teaching with two instructors of my team. One was Arancha and the mm. other is Alopez. Wow. And you see, like, <laughs> it, it's just like, it's amazing the, the endless amount of stories that I know you have just of different artists that you've come in contact with. And I think it really speaks true because you talked about especially having that space of Club Cats uh, from yeah. where you are and realizing how many artists come in and out of that. But then I fast love, forwarding. I have a lot of histories of many, many, many artists. You cannot imagine. For example, uh, the first time that uh, I was in Hollywood, I knew Ataka because he hired me first, like uh, with my Kisomba show. And I, I bring Daniel and Desiree in Houston Kisomba Bachata Festival. So at the end of the weekend, I told them, hey, guys, uh, why we don't stay here in summertime? Because I was with Julia in that top time, my dance partner and my girlfriend in that top moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daniel and the city was together also. So I said, hey, guys, why you don't stay? Let's just travel in the U.S. <laughs> and there was another artist, Chavez, also a good friend. And they say, no, we, we cannot. We need to go back because we need to work on Monday. I say, okay, cool. And Daniel say, yes, why not? Okay, but if we stay, we need to go to Las Vegas, you know, the typical thing. Yeah. Las Vegas, Los Angeles, blah, blah, blah. So I say, okay, why not? Because I was here before, and I called George, and I say, George, look. Uh, because he was helping me always in everything. He's an amazing organizer, amazing instructor, and especially amazing person. Because George is this guy, this kind of people who organize everything in one day. Yes. <laughs> boom, 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 one festival. Incredible. So I say, George, um, I will stay here two months. Could you help me? And we, I have friends in U.S. and in between his connection and my connection, we start to create a tour 2012. Yeah. 
And in that moment, I was teaching Kisomba, and Daniel in the city was teaching sensual bachata. So U.S. really, in that moment, I started to know sensual bachata and Kisomba all around. So we was in Atlanta, Georgia, in uh, Dallas, in the, uh, Houston, in San Antonio, in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, Daniel and the was married. Mm -hmm. uh, in one day, they was married. <laughs> I mean, it's Vegas. <laughs> and uh, I remember because I give them the rings for being oh, married. Wow. So for real, they are married in USA. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, his first tattoo was in USA, in Las Vegas, the first line that he had. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the stamp there. And, and I think, too, you said something very intriguing was your influence in Kizomba and the festivals and actually hearing that you were, you put the initiative forward to start developing training courses for people to become teachers. And I think that's a really good topic to touch on for sure. In that, in that momentum, I created the system named Kisoma Feeling System. Okay? Mm. Because I have a lot of respect of the origin of the things. I learned bachata going to Dominican Republic. I learned Kisomba going to Angola and Cabo Verde. I learned uh, Samba going to Brazil. I learned tango going to Argentina. Everything that I knew about salsa LA style, I learned from the Basques in LA, Cuban salsa in Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Colombia. So mm -hmm. every time when I try to learn something new, I always try to go to the origin of the place because I don't want to learn only figures. I need to go for understand what the music, the musicians, want to express, you know? Yeah. And uh, what happened is, from the music side, musician side is one thing, and the dancer side is other thing. And in sometimes, it's connected. Mm. So because I'm instructor on one, in Dominican Republic, for example, if you don't know, if you don't eat con con, if you don't go to the rural areas, if you don't drink rum, if you don't feel the passion of the people in Dominican Republic, you really don't understand why Dominicans dance in that way. Mm. That's why always I try to go to Dominican Republic almost every year. And I try to bring students from Europe to there. But the same happened about USA. USA is amazing. And uh, you can see different cultural things in different points. So what is beautiful was in Kisomba, in USA Kisomba Bachata Festival, that was the first Kisomba Festival in USA, in Houston, Texas, in 2012. We create a boot camp of six hours for instructors who want to teach Kisomba, only for instructors. Actually, Chavez and Silvia and Daniel and Desire go inside of this course of six hours, mm. and this movement of the way in the bachata is coming from this instructional, instructional course. Mm. They learn from Kisomba this movement in the bachata. Yes, I, I definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah, that signature move that Daniel and Desiree do, that close-knit. Wow, that's amazing. And realizing like how important having those teacher instructional courses are if you want to become you know, an ultimate teacher in a sense. And uh, from this point, there start like 20 something couples of new instructors of Kisomba, and they spread Kisomba love all around the, the USA. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. Of and now course, mm -hmm. there was, and there, there are amazing instructors now in of Kisomba in US. And of course, that was only the first small step but now you have incredible and very good uh, instructor of Kisomba. And actually there was other before me, but our festival was the first festival of Kisomba. Wow. And, and now that kind of helps me uh, transition into understanding before we get to the present day and just everything that's going on before we conclude really is understanding how the creation 
of the Bachatea World Congress and the World Bachata Masters. I think that really, in a sense, with these events there were helping um, build these big names in the Bachata industry that we know today. Well, uh, that was a really beautiful momentum uh, because what we want always is join all the world in, in one in one special and specific place. So World Bachata Master, the championship, is the champion of the champions. And we joined the champion of World Latin Dance Cup, World Salsa Summit, Japan Bachata Cup, Bachata Stars, Bachata Open, and every new champion of the different world championship, we bring them to Spain for compete and see which one is the best of the best. But in a collaborate in a, colla in a collaborative way. So all these competitions, I support all these competitions. So from there coming to the stage, uh, big names like um, Daniel Desiree, 2013 and 2012, um, Ure Lambera, 2014, Ronald Alba, 2015, Marcelo Belen, 2016, uh, 17, 2015 was Alfredo y Andrea, 2018, Ronald Alba again, 2019, Marcelo Belen again, and 2020, the new amazing star, which is um, Anthony and Melanie. She's from Venezuela and she's from Spain. Wow, that's great. And just realizing again, like even throughout the years, you really focused on allowing the people from Europe to and just collaborate US. and then work together, but also work with the US. And it's a collaborative effort because at the end of the day, like you said, you just want the art of bachata, but the art of dance to grow. That's the main objective here. And yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. <laughs> and I think that's really social important. Social dance, social dance is good for the spirit, for the soul mm -hmm. of everyone. And any of all of us are working every day a lot, you know, for for bring things for, to your family, to your friends. And especially in this moment uh, in which it looks like the the world is crazy and many things are happening. What I see is in, for example, my new project, which is named bachataflix.com, mm -hmm. we have 150 dancers, musicians, and DJs mm. from 21 countries for create the Netflix of the bachata, and salsa, and cumbia, and reggaeton, and dembo, all Latin dances. So the people can now, we just have eight days before we start and it's online bachataflix.com and the people go inside and can see artists from all over the world from new york mm -hmm. texas uh, mexico argentina all europe yeah china everything wow and, and that's amazing because again like now currently in the present just with everything we've been going through and realizing with covid it's affected our dance community a lot it's really just affected the promotional aspect, the actual events, monetary financials. It's affected travel uh, compared to last year when we didn't have these type of problems. But realizing too, like you said, presently having a platform like bachataflix.com, it allows people to still stay in tune with their dance community, but still learn and understand the artists and the musicians and the DJs. Because I think all three is important. The dancers, the DJs, you know, the dancers and the DJs, definitely. And then the musicians behind it as well, I think is really awesome. And understanding that, I mean, from the beginning of 2009 towards where we are in 2020, to have yourself still taking the time out of your life to focus on bringing the art of bachata to the world, um, I definitely think it, it carries celebration. Thank you very much for your interview. That was an amazing uh, time for me. Yeah. Uh, normally, I do not want to give these information or inter online interviews. I prefer to stay in the backstage. You I know. know. <laughs> because for me, the artists are others, not me. But yeah. well, I'm a communicator and uh, because... Uh, 
I know that you are uh, you are doing a great job uh, showing this other part of our personalities. And uh, yes. for me, it's like a conversation with a friend. So actually, absolutely, with my whiskey, you know, with my whiskey. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and honestly, I'm glad that we've been able to have this talk today um, and realizing that for me, I think it's just a starting of a larger conversation that we can have in the future. Uh, because, again, I'm thankful that we were able to really kind of get a glimpse of your life of how it started until now and realizing the amount of influence that you have in our community. I appreciate it a lot. I'm thankful that we could have this opportunity. And I hope definitely during the future, later this year or early next year, I can have you on my uh, platform again and being able to just discuss more and tell all of the crazy stories that you've had in your life and just yeah, us yeah. have it over a drink. I definitely would so love I'm to do that. I only can tell you in person and not recorded, okay? Absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, I, I thank you so much, Pablo, for taking the time out of your day. Um, I know you're a very busy man, but I think today and this interview as well has allowed myself, but the people who are going to be listening to gain a better perspective on you as an influencer, as a promoter, as an organizer. And again, I thank you so much. This here truly is a celebration of all of the success you've had thus far. And I definitely can't wait till things get better. We can all reunite. Goodbye and thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you again and have a great and safe time out there.